Howdy, my totally is always tubular gamers and we're back, but this time not with a ranking video, but a review. Today we're going to be reviewing Star Ocean The Divine Force, released by Square Enix just a few weeks ago, and they were nice enough to hook me up with a review code, so major shout out to Square Enix, uh, thanks for the code, I really do appreciate it, and I thought I'd do a little review on this game here. Now, before I played this game, I knew what Star Ocean was, and I definitely had played the second one for like a few minutes. But I had never really sat down and sank a decent amount of time into any of the games, until now that is, as I've played Star Ocean The Divine Force, also known as Star Ocean 6 in Japan. Now what is this game about? What even type of game is this? Well, it's Square Enix, so you know it's probably a JRPG, but this is more of an action JRPG. The story sees you play as two characters, Raymond or Leticia. You can choose between either of them at the start of the game, and there are a few different key points where it is different for each of them, but really, you can play through the game once and you'll get the main story. You'll get enough of the story for it to, it, the second playthrough's not warranted. Unless you're one of those that wants to get everything out of the game's story and characters, etc., then by all means, absolutely go for it. So what's the story actually about? It focuses on a large party of characters that become embroiled in a war between basically underdeveloped nations that's being funded by intergalactic antagonists. See, there's Leticia and Albert and their entire kingdom, and they're definitely a lot more medieval. They're what you would expect from a more fantasy setting. They aren't exactly the most developed. But Raymond shows up, he crash lands onto the planet, and he's from another world where they have much, much more technology. And on top of this, Leticia and her people are actually at war with another nation. You know, that's been a normal, tumultuous war, as war is, but bringing in Raymond, bringing in other people from, you know, another civilization with much more advanced technologies, uh, definitely going to change the tides. Now when it comes to the story, while it doesn't have the strongest start and it is kind of slow at first, it rapidly picks up and gets a lot more interesting really fast. It doesn't take like 30 hours to get really into the story. No, by even like the 5 hour mark you're actually pretty interested in it. I'm not going to come out and say the story was, you know, like amazing or mind blowing or reinvented the wheel. It was nothing like that. Really the best part of the story was the characters. The characters absolutely sold the story, whether it's Leticia and her love for her people and just how like royal she is and serious with Raymond and his more laid back attitude and really just how everyone interacts with each other I thought was the best part especially like towards the beginning where they're like what is this technology ah they're talking to each other without seeing each other and I I always love stuff like that but I definitely think the characters were the strongest there's a bunch of other good characters here that come in like Midas and his people and I really yeah I thought the characters were the best aspect of the game story there's also some goofy moments and even bits of humor sprinkled in and I, I again I thought the story was actually pretty decent to good the characters are pretty nice and they definitely prop this in entire premise up. Okay, so when you're actually playing the game, what is the game like? So like I said, it is an action JRPG, so really there are two parts to it. There's the part where you're exploring the world, and then there's the part where you're getting into combat. Now when you're exploring around, there's towns, there's actually some really big areas that remind me almost of Xenoblade that you can freely explore thanks to the game's superb exploration mechanics. And what do I mean by this? Towards the beginning of the game, you get this thing called Duma, and it allows you to fly around. Yeah, you can pretty much freely fly around these areas and explore to your heart's content, and a bunch of these areas actually make good use for it. Some of these can, areas can be very vertical, and you can fly not straight up, but pretty high up. You can glide, and there's a lot to see. You can even find these crystals that level up Duma and allow you to do more damage, better exploration. There's also items. There's even side quests to find here. Not that I found any really at all, but there's a bunch to find here. And of course, when you're in towns, you're interacting with townspeople. Now, when you're not interacting with anybody or exploring, you're getting into combat. Like I've said before already, it is action-oriented, so you have AP in the battles, ability points. You can't just spam square as much as you want and button mash your way out of it. Every attack costs ability points. However, it's not difficult to get these back. They come back seriously in like one second. You can get more ability points if you properly utilize Duma. Remember that flying thing I just talked about? You can use it in battle too. You can use it to get a blind side or a surprise attack on an enemy, allowing you to do more damage, better hits, and gain more AP. Your max AP can also go up. It can also decrease when you get attacked. There's a bunch of different combos you can have here. There's dodging, and you can actually create your own strings, which is cool. Every character has a set amount of abilities. You can unlock more through the skill tree as you progress, and you can create your own combos, trying to find out what the optimal combo is. My personal favorite was Raymond. I had a lot of really good sword combos I was able to get him with. There's some fun ones in there like Albert where you can mix spells into his combos, or Leticia where you can have a bunch of quick attacks and like finish with one giant attack. 
and no two characters are alike. They're actually all very different from each other, which is always a big plus. I didn't feel like I was playing as the same character with all of them, and you know, some of them I liked more than others. Again, I liked Raymond. I didn't like, say, Midas. I his playstyle was just not my way to go, but I really do like the combat in this game. I think it's actually rewarding, it's satisfying, you can get really raw at it, and when you're blindsiding enemies and just flying through them, oh, it's actually really good. Now, I generally think the combat is actually pretty fun. It really is as good as you make it to be. If you want to get really in-depth with the combos and the moves and learn everybody, you can actually have a lot of fun here. If you want to keep it casual, though, I mean, I'm pretty sure the game will reward you until you get to the boss fights, where this game just has crazy difficulty spikes. I mean, I'm not very good at it, I'll be the first to admit it, but the bosses in this game just absolutely whoop my ass. They really wiped the floor with me and I actually had to like sit down and really try and grind even a little bit because I was just having a lot of trouble actually with them. But I do think the combat is actually pretty solid and I had a lot of fun, especially the further I got through the game it became a lot more open ended and there was a lot of different abilities and just moves that you could perform. And I'll praise this game that I think it has a lot of customization with how you want to approach each character and the moves you want and then the skill tree is open enough to where you can also just kind of customize your characters to how you want them, you know, like a role playing game. Now when it comes to the overall gameplay loop, I think it is pretty good in this game. I had a lot of fun with it, I like exploring, I think the combat is enjoyable as well. I think not a lot of people have been giving this game a ton of credit and that's a shame because I think Star Ocean The Divine Force has been very enjoyable. Now when it comes to the presentation, it's a bit of a mixed bag, the textures look pretty good, the characters kind of all look like dolls, I mean some of them look pretty cute, but um, it's not my cup of tea, I'll say that, but it looks fine enough. The frame rate was a bit shaky in some areas, but for the most part it was fine. The presentation was alright. Music? Oh, I actually really like the music. It's really calm and soothing for the most part, and ambient in other parts, and yeah, I, I thought it was pretty good, and the voice acting was solid enough also. And lengthwise, it's pretty good too, taking you from like 25 to 30, maybe 35 hours if you really explore. I didn't really find any side quests, I found like two the whole game, which was kind of weird. I think there's a card game here also, but I just never found a way to get any cards, so maybe that's not the best. I also thought the interface was just not only underwhelming, but just kind of lame, like it looked lame and operating it just wasn't exciting, it wasn't very good. But in conclusion, I think this game is actually pretty solid. I think it's fun and it's actually given me good reason to go back and try the other Star Oceans and one day maybe do a ranking video on all of them. I don't think this game reinvents the wheel or does anything all that crazy and it does have some flaws and a somewhat shaky presentation, but it's still a good time and I don't think it should be missed by fans of the genre. I know that Square Enix has a bunch of RPGs out this fall, but I think Star Ocean The Divine Force might be one of the more underrated ones. It seems like the whole series is low-key underrated. Anyway, I thought the game was pretty good. Let me know your thoughts about it, or if you like seeing these reviews. I know it is a little different from the ranking videos, but I thought I'd mix it up in Square Enix again. Thank you very much for hooking me up. That was very nice of you. Anyway, see everyone later. Bye-bye.